Sup, Chooms? How y'all living? Hope everything is Nova and you're all having a preem week. So, I just got started on another project recently, so I have a bigger video coming out soon. But before I film that, I did want to make a quick video on a pipeline treatment that has caught my interest recently. As you Chooms know, even though we already have some excellent hair loss treatments in the form of finasteride and dutasteride, as well as topical minoxidil, of course, I'm always on the lookout for new treatments in the pipeline. I've done videos on several of these innovative hair loss treatments like GT20029, TDM105795, S cube 3 and many others that all work through completely unique mechanisms and offer a lot of potential for the hair loss community. In fact, I have a whole playlist containing 42 videos on future treatments and I'll go ahead and link that playlist below. I, of course, have always welcomed innovations in hair loss research, and that is why here at the Hair Cafe Institute of Scientific Research and Integrity, we have a dedicated team of solarian scientists who are constantly on the watch for brand new hair loss treatments that are on the horizon. Well, Chooms, I'm happy to announce that there is a brand new treatment being developed in one of the pinnacles of hair loss research in the entire world, specifically Good Korea. The name of the treatment is JW0061. The JW stands for JW pharmaceutical, and here is their website in both Korean and in English. After much research, I was able to determine that JW actually stands for Jin Woong, which is derived from the founder's name, Lee Ji Sook, who is also known as Jin Woong. So there's some trivia for you, Jones. So anyways, what is JW0061? Let's go ahead and just call it JW61 for the sake of simplicity henceforth. Well, JW61 stimulates the WNT wind pathway. If you followed my channel before, then you probably have heard me talk about the wind pathway many times and are familiar with it, but in case the subject is new to you, let's go ahead and brush up on our hair loss witchery and quickly look at what the WNT wind pathway is and what role it plays in androgenic alopecia. So when you hear scammers and grifters say things like hair loss is extremely complicated and that no one has quite figured out all the nuances and mysteries behind androgenic alopecia, they're lying to you. They just say that so they can pretend that they have some solution of their own that they can sell to you, whether it be a theory about broccoli or some new repackaged edition of the Brit Fruit Theory. They are all completely wrong, though. The fact is, is that we have figured out everything about hair loss. The detailed molecular mechanisms that cause hair loss have all been worked out in great detail, and there is nothing any of these snake oil salesmen or medical editors online have figured out about hair loss that infinitely more qualified researchers have somehow missed over the decades, despite having far more qualifications and funding than any of these con men. The mechanisms have all been figured out, and this article here goes over all these mechanisms. I highly recommend this article to anyone who wants to read about all the details of how hair loss occurs on a molecular basis. It will go ahead and be linked in the description below if you're interested. Anyways, the wind pathway is one of these mechanisms involved in hair growth. In fact, it is a signaling pathway that causes growth in many tissues, not just hair follicles. But in hair follicles, the wind pathway is important during the hair growth cycle. After a hair follicle enters into the telogen resting phase, the wind pathway is necessary for the hair cycle to restart with a new antigen growth phase. Now, we know that hair follicles from balding areas and people who have androgenic alopecia have some important differences from normal hair follicles. Specifically, these hair follicles have both an increase in type 2 5 air enzyme activity as well as an increased number of androgen receptors. The result of all this is that people who have androgenic alopecia have more DHT in their hair follicles, which is the central culprit and causing hair loss, and their hair follicles are also more sensitive to DHT. So, oftentimes you hear people ask and debate things like, do balding scalps have more DHT or are their hair follicles just more sensitive? The answer is that both are true. The reason for these abnormalities, though, is clearly due to genetics. But the genetics are complicated because there are hundreds of genes involved in the balding process. These different genetics explain why some people have more aggressive hair loss than other people do, and it's also why sometimes the pattern of hair loss is different from the usual male pattern that we associate with the Norwood scale, such as like in people who have diffuse hair loss or retrograde alopecia. So even though these types of hair loss are irregular, they are still forms of androgenic alopecia that can be treated with conventional therapies like finasteride and minoxidil, and I'll go ahead and link my video on that subject below. Anyways, as you can see from this diagram here, even though we know DHT causes hair loss, the effects of increased DHT at the molecular level in the hair follicles is still pretty complicated. The net effect, though, is that the wind pathway is shut down, which then interferes with the normal hair cycle. 
possible. But besides shutting down the wind pathway, DHT has other downstream effects as well, like increasing negative growth factors, including TGF-beta-1 and IL-6. So, like all cellular mechanisms, it's very complicated. But the important thing to remember here, Chooms, is that high levels of DHT shut down the wind pathway, which is one of the ways in which DHT destroys your hair follicles. So, back in May of this year, JW Pharmaceuticals announced some results from a study on their new drug called JW61. The results were presented in a poster presentation at the Society of Investigative Dermatology in Dallas, Texas. As the report says, JW61 activates the wind pathway in the hair follicles. Like I already said earlier, the wind pathway is crucial for regulating hair growth, and the wind pathway is suppressed by DHT in people who have androgenic alopecia. So, the only scientific publication on JW61 is this abstract here, which talks about the discovery of JW61 and how it specifically affects the wind pathway, but it doesn't have a lot of details about the experimental data. The news report from JW Pharmaceuticals does fill in a little bit more detail, though. The investigators tested JW61 on skin organoids, which are clumps of skin cells that have the potential to grow hair follicles and other skin elements like sebaceous glands. Skin organoids treated with JW61 developed 7.2 times more hair follicles after 5 days of treatment and developed 4 times as many hair follicles after 10 days of treatment compared to standard treatment. One big problem though is that they don't mention in the new report what standard treatment was. Was it minoxidil? Was it finasteride? Was it a combination of both? Did Rob England massage their scalps for 70 minutes a day? I'm being facetious of course, but nobody knows because they didn't specify. The company also reported some animal study results and in the animal model there were 4 groups. There was low-dose JW61, high-dose JW61, standard treatment, and placebo. Low-dose JW61 showed an 18% improvement in hair growth over standard treatment, while high-dose JW61 showed a 39% efficacy improvement over standard treatment. So, the only other piece of information we can get from the press release is that JW Pharmaceuticals is going to start a phase 1 trial of the drug in humans this year. And yeah, I know what you're all thinking, just 5 more years bro, right? Well, we don't know when this drug is going to come out, but it's probably at least a couple of years away because of just how glacial hair loss treatment is in general. And admittedly, there's not a whole lot of detail here, Chooms, at least not at the moment. But the good news, though, is that there are a lot of similar drugs that are in development. If what I said about JW61 sounds familiar to you, it's because I've talked about three other drugs that affect the wind pathway in previous videos. Although it is worth mentioning that all of them interact with the wind pathway through different mechanisms. So for all we know, JW W could be the most potent one in development at the moment. Those other drugs that I've talked about though are SM04554, KY19382, and WAY316606, and I'll go ahead and link my videos on those treatments below if you're interested in learning more about how the wind pathway works. When I first covered all these drugs, they were in the early stages of research several years ago, and I really haven't heard much news on them at all lately. They're taking a long time to develop, but to the best of my knowledge, these treatments are all still on their way. They're just taking a very long time. But overall, I am optimistic about the wind pathway drugs, but I do have to add one note of caution for my fellow hair loss witchers about these treatments. One problem with the wind pathway is that it is implicated in the development of cancer. So if these drugs go systemic and overstimulate the wind pathway, that could cause some very serious and potentially lethal problems. So the safety of these drugs may be one of the issues which is making development so slow. I don't know why exactly, but I do know that there is no way in hell any company is going to put these drugs on the market unless they're absolutely 100% convinced that they don't promote cancer, because otherwise they would have lawsuits up the ass. If that means delaying its release for a year or two, then so be it. It sucks, I know, because I would like to see more treatments hit the market soon too, but safety of course is very important for us all. Anyways, JW61 is still very early in development, and we probably won't get any useful human results for a couple of years or so at least. I think treating the downstream effects of DHT is a reasonable strategy, but I doubt it works any better than just lowering DHT itself with a 5-AR blocker. DHT is of course the source of all problems when it comes to androgenic alopecia, so by taking a 5-AR inhibiting drug, you're not just targeting one downstream effect of DHT like the wind pathway, you're targeting all of them, which of course will make the drug much more efficacious. So I think the wind pathway drugs will be effective adjunctive therapies, but I do not think they will outright replace 5-AR inhibitors. So 
So I'll of course keep an eye on JW61, but we're not going to get human results anytime soon, and I don't think the results will be any better than just using a 5-year inhibitor like finasteride or dutasteride. But it will still be nice to have the additional treatment nevertheless, especially for people who don't tolerate minoxidil very well and they're looking for an alternative adjunctive therapy. So that's it for today, chums. But I do have a concept of a video on a rather unexpected subject that is coming up very soon. Don't worry, it's not off topic, but it may not be what you're expecting. So make sure that you check back soon because I will see you again once that video is done. Until then, thank you for watching. God bless.